Welcome back, everybody. This Week in America online, thisweekinamerica.us. Dr. Edward Carlton is using his experience as a mechanical engineer and a healthcare professional to help patients who suffer from brain disorders find relief through a drug-free solution. Now, through a brain training method known as neurofeedback, he has helped patients who suffer from the likes of ADD, ADHD, bipolar disorder, PTSD, autism, epilepsy, insomnia, and traumatic brain injuries. Dr. Carlton, author of the book, The Answer, views neurofeedback training as a cross between engineering and medicine, using the best of both to provide long-term drug-free relief for patients. He believes that through neurofeedback training, many symptoms caused by brain disorders can be eliminated without the use of pharmaceuticals. He knows firsthand, diagnosed with bipolar disorder in midlife, he spent years searching for a natural solution to his brain-based disorder, and he found it with neurofeedback training. Dr. Edward Carlton, author of The Answer, the book for anyone with ADD, ADHD, anxiety, depression, insomnia, autism, bipolar disorder, epilepsy, PTSD, or traumatic brain injury, is back with us on This Week in America. Dr. Carlton, welcome back. It's great to have you with us on the show. Thanks for having me, Rick. This is such an important topic, and I recently read a headline that caught my attention, immediately thought about having you back on the program. It said studies show an 89% success rate for improved autism outcomes with neurofeedback training. Let's talk about that. First of all, what are some of the the symptoms? I understand there are different symptoms involved in, in autism. Talk a little bit about that, and then we'll get into the results of the study. Okay, yes. Autism itself is quite complex. Um, used to be known just as autism. However, in recent years, it's now properly referred to as the spectrum. It's autistic. It's your, if you're autistic, very often you're, you're referred to as being on the autism spectrum. Yes. And the reason for that is there's such a wide range of um, expression of the illness itself. Biggest challenge most people have with autism is communication. Okay, so the fact of the matter is many of these youngsters and adults suffering with autism have high levels of IQ. The problem is they can't communicate with the outside world in a manner that makes it possible for them to participate. So when, when somebody says they have autism, for example, Asperger's is one most people talk about, right? Well, that's a much gentler form than what people refer to as full-blown autism back 10 years ago. So someone who has Asperger's, the difference between them and a full-blown autistic case is they can actually communicate to some degree. They very often can hold jobs. Uh, and in some cases, the only way you can tell is because of the, the stiff manner in which they communicate and how they socialize. Um, so typically when I see patients in my office, the biggest reason patient, parents or loved ones are bringing them in is because they're trying to figure out how to better communicate with the kids or their young adults without the medications that they're typically on. So the symptoms that you're asking about is going to be anything from um, anxiety, uh, social withdrawal. They're going to have challenges with speech. they will be speech delayed or they just won't speak clearly at all. Um, very often when you're speaking to them, you come to the realization they're not hearing you. You think they're, not, they're like in a different plane, right? They're, they're just someplace else. And they really are. Because the truth of the matter is although you're speaking to them, you may be speaking slowly. They're not communicating because their brain's not working properly. I hear so sometimes people talk about ADHD. Are there similarities, differences between the, the two? A great deal of similarities. And... A marked case of ADD or ADHD can mimic a mild form of autism uh, for the same reason. The child or the person has impulse disorders. They can't sit still. They fidget a lot. They get up. They, they speak out when they're not supposed to. That's the hyperactive portion. Uh, when you're dealing with attention deficit, you're dealing with focus, concentration, short-term working memory issues. They have difficulty staying on task. They cannot do... Um, complex executive activities without a lot of guidance. So you, you'll see a lot of the same symptoms with autistic people. The difference is a matter of degree, typically. Our guest on This Week in America, once again, is Dr. Edward Carlton. He's the author of the book, The Answer. His website is very simple. It's carltonneurofeedbackcenter.com. 
all of that you can link on directly by going to our website thisweekinamerica.us. Do we have any any reasons why this occur? Are you able to pinpoint and, and find out why this develops? Uh, that I'm aware of, there are no studies that definitively show where right. autism comes from. That being said, there's obviously a lot of controversy. Um, one of the favorites for most people is immunizations. And you could make an argument before when it was mercury-based that maybe that had something to do with it. These days, my understanding, they've changed a lot of that for immunizations. So I'm not sure you could uh, draw a clear line between one and the other. That being said, uh, that's one of the, the etiologies that many people like to point to, right? But the fact of the matter is uh, the United States does have a higher incidence of autism than pretty much anywhere else in the world. Let's talk about what has been the conventional treatment for what's referred to as, as autism up to now and, and neurofeedback and why this actually neurofeedback training is, is having success and the difference between that and, and drug intervention that we're talking about. Well, the normal treatment for autism depends on the symptoms you're trying to take care of. If you're dealing with communication issues, uh, your primary choice will be talk therapy, it will be what's called AB or ABA therapy, where you're dealing with a cognitive behavioral therapist. Very effective, by the way. That being said, uh, it can, it's sometimes in group settings, but frequently they're going to be dealing with the child or the adult uh, individually. And so what they're doing there is helping the child communicate outside using different cognitive uh, tests and different cognitive games and different ways to teach them how to think and communicate better. That's, in most cases, that's always used. For the children that are in public schools where they have a little more um, access to, I guess, activities and the teachers and such, then you can actually get IEPs, they're called, um, at least in our areas, that's what they're called, independent education programs, and the children are given a great deal of assistance. So that's a very effective way of dealing with it. Unfortunately, depending on the child, uh, if they are anxious, which is very typical in a case like this, that's where you'll start seeing the use of your anti-anxiety medications you may be dealing with for the focus issues. That's where you start seeing the amphetamines, the Adderall, and those types of things, Concentra, that's used for ADD symptoms. So it depends on what you're trying to resolve as far as the uh, patient itself is concerned. But yeah, you're dealing with primary drug therapy and then talk therapy and that type of work done with the kids or the adults. When they, when they were put on a regimen of, of, of pharmaceuticals, does that address, so often we see it addressing the symptoms, not the cause. Do the pharmaceuticals get to the root of the problem or just sort of mask some of the, uh, some of the symptoms? Well, the use of the pharmaceuticals, they never claim that you're going to solve the problem. It's, they're not curing anything. What you're doing is helping with the symptoms. And that's exactly what they'll tell you, which is true. I mean, if you've got someone who suffers with loss of focus and concentration, if you give them Adderall or Ativan or different things, depending on the type of medication you're using, but if you give them one of the amphetamines that's typically used, it does cause the brain to focus. So it definitely works. The challenge is the side effects that people notice with them. Um, and the truth of the matter is uh, you have to take the medications indefinitely. It does not affect change. It simply makes the brain work while you're on them more effectively. But it has a, it's a price to be paid when you get off of them. Let's talk about neurofeedback training, exactly what that is. Uh, we've done a couple of programs with Dr. Carlton. They're available at uh, our website, thisweekinamerica.us, by going to, uh, to YouTube and our, our video library there. Talk a little bit briefly about what it is and why it seems to be effective. I mentioned this one particular study, 89% success rate for improved autism outcomes. What is neurofeedback training and how does that differ from the, the pharmaceuticals that normally are dispensed? The primary goal of neurofeedback training is just that. We do brain training in our center. So with pharmaceuticals, you're dealing with the chemistry of the body. The brain is still working exactly as it was, so it may be creating anxiety, but if you give someone uh, a serotonin uptake, re a reuptake inhibitor, the chemistry of the body doesn't change in accordance to what the brain is thinking. However, with neurofeedback training, someone comes into my office and they're dealing with it's an autistic child and they suffer with anxiety and they have focus and concentration issues. We would do a brain map, uh, which it looks like a shower cap, right? Uh, no pain involved. 
all we're doing is measuring brainwave output. Most people are familiar with sleep studies, for example. So this uses a similar technology to sleep studies. The difference is we analyze the information somewhat differently. So based on that information, we can determine how the brain is actually working. Most people would not be surprised if you went to the gym and a trainer examined your body and you said, okay, your muscles are weak here, strong here, we need to work in this area, stretch and that type of stuff, correct? Yes. Okay, well, we do the same thing except we do it with someone's brain. We do an analysis of the brain. We use it with a brain map. I can determine where it's going too fast, where it's going too slow, where the communication isn't proper. With that information, you can design a training protocol. The neat thing about neurofeedback training, there's a bunch of things that are positives versus drug therapy. Number one, no side effects. Number two, the training has long-term results. And the reason I say that, the study that you're referring to the key is once you train the brain, you're developing new neural pathways while you're training it. So once the patient, young or older, gets better, those improvements are theirs to keep. So once they start thinking better, they continue to think better long after their last session in our office. I mentioned the, that one particular study, and there are three or four, I believe, that are out there and sort of commonly shared. What do you see in, in patients who come to you? Have you seen re good results? Absolutely. Yeah, and I see a smile on your face for the video portion of the, as you said that. So you're actually able to offer them what some type of, of relief, at least some possibility there's an end to this with, with using the uh, neurofeedback training. I'm not going to make the claim that we can cure autism. That's not the case. Right. But you, I, I, you made me smile because I had a patient in yesterday. And the difference is this life-changing. The father was so ecstatic. It was just really neat to be there. And you went through that yourself. I mentioned in the beginning, and you'll see that in past shows, that Dr. Yeah. Carlton went through all sorts of, uh, of issues and the medication and the side effects and the long-term implications of the, uh, the pharmaceuticals. Found neurofeedback training, uh, believes in it so much that you are now practicing this. Yeah, when you were able to, to offer some some hope out there. It, it, it has to mean everything to you. It has to be, and obviously was very emotional and uh, uh, certainly a highlight of the, the professional career. Yeah, it was. Uh, the thing about it is this young man, when he came in, um, he's, all, he's on the spectrum, right? So the dad came in yesterday because they did a reevaluation of him at the school. And uh, as it turns out, he, he'd shown so much improvement that they removed him from the spectrum. He's no longer classed as having autism. So he's done. It's, his dad was ecstatic, and so was I. It has to mean something, too, when you're able to take a, a young person and not commit them to a, a lifetime of, of drugs and pharmaceuticals. And, and you've seen where that's happened. Talk about the, the harmful nature of having, and you went through it at a young age where you start on drugs, and to really you don't see an end in sight. No, the challenge there is, uh, again, because medications do not change how the brain works, it simply forces the brain or the body to respond differently because you're changing the blood chemistry using pharmaceuticals chemistry, right? But the problem is the brain's still doing the same process. Anybody who's ever suffered with anxiety can tell you, you take an anti-anxiety medication, you're still anxious. You just can't, you can't tell because your blood chemistry doesn't change in response to the anxiety your brain is creating. The neat thing with these, with these autistic uh, patients is they come in and they're trying to communicate. And all of a sudden, they start communicating. I had a youngster, six years old, when he first came in, he was so scared, I had to take my jacket off in order to speak to him, because he, he didn't like doctors. After he was with us for 30 sessions, and he would walk around, he spoke to us, he high-fived everybody, <laughs> he gave me a hug before he was done, and is doing much better. I'm not gonna say he's not autistic, because he still is. But he's much better. His communication was better. It, and the thing about it is the therapist that were working, him, working with him, I communicated with one of them, and they were pleased because they made so much better progress with him while he was with us, and they were encouraged that they would be able to do much better with him in the future because his brain was working so much more efficiently. 
And you talk about the reaction of the parents you just mentioned with the, the young person you were talking about when you actually have a patient who comes in and you start seeing that progress that all of a sudden you're looking in their eyes and you're seeing some responsiveness that you had not seen there before. Mm. What is that like? Because you are literally giving them a, a whole new shot at life. Yes. And I apologize. A little emotional. Yesterday was a big deal in our office. But yeah, the, the, the neat thing about it is when when people come to my office, they're pretty much been told that this is it, you know, this is as good as it's going to get, or they're struggling because the, their young, their children typically is when they bring them in are, are struggling so significantly and to give them relief from that. The parents get relief. The children get better. It's an opportunity for them to do more with their lives. It means that may not be, housebound forever. They may be able to get out. They may be able to get a job. They may be able to, you know, have relationships with other people that are more normal than they would otherwise. And the medications do not give them that. Getting their brain to work better does. We're talking about neurofeedback training. The website where you can get all the information is carltonneurofeedbackcenter.com. You can link on to our website, thisweekinamerica.us, and get uh, to Dr. Carlton's website directly and get that information. The book is called The Answer, the book for anyone with ADD, ADHD, anxiety, depression, insomnia, autism, bipolar disorder, epilepsy, PTSD, or traumatic brain injury. Again, great information available at the website. A minute or so left in the program, and we've talked about this before, you have people that come in with the brain-based uh, issues. You also have people come in that just want what sort of to optimize their performance, the executives who come in just to be a little bit sharper mentally. So it actually works in that category as well too, doesn't it? Absolutely. I'm mean, actually getting a growing number of those folks uh, who were coming in. I've had two come in, as a matter of fact, because their kids got so much better. Their executives, they came in for their own selves because they wanted to see if they can improve their own performance. And they've certainly found that to be true. Absolutely. The neat thing about neurofeed training is there's no age limit. My I was going to ask that as we close with with the autism. You you may think, okay, my my son has had this for a number of years. He's in his late twenties now. Probably nothing that can be done. And age really isn't a factor, is what you're telling us. Not at all. As long as the person is cognitive and aware, and we can communicate with them. We can affect change and help. And you can look into this and yes. get a lot of answers. A good section of the website talks about the common questions of neurofeedback training. Again, the website is carltonneurofeedbackcenter.com. Back with us on the program is Dr. Edward Carlton, author of the book, The Answer. Doctor, it is always a pleasure and an enlightening program. When I saw that headline, it's like I knew you would bring us some great information on that, and you have. Thank you so much for being with us on the program. Thanks for having me, Rick. It is our pleasure. Once again, Dr. Edward Carlton. The book is called The Answer. His website is carltonneurofeedbackcenter.com. And of course, you can go to our website, thisweekinamerica.us, and link on directly. You're listening to This Week in America, and we're back after these messages. <laughs> 